Bailey cannot catch a break because when her main event was going on at SmackDown, we had a whole bunch of news of people getting released from the WWE, which is nothing surprising because we usually see this after WrestleMania. Of certain names being let go, we also have something called the spring cleaning, I guess. We'll see if that continues. But from what I was able to gather, we have five names that have been released by the WWE for now. We could stop right here or this could continue and I'm leaning more towards this continuing to be honest with you. So if that happens to be the case, I'll be coming right to you with some more updates on this channel. So stay tuned for that. But let's talk about the people who are being released now. The first person I'll focus on is Zion Quinn. I'll be honest, in my humble experience, the only reason I know him is because I think back in 2K22 or something, someone just made a really good looking cob of him. Like it looked extremely accurate. So I downloaded him. And that's the only reason why I know his existence. Oh, it's like he's a guy from NXT. You know, no disrespect to anybody here, obviously. They've all lost a job, maybe a dream and... It's not the end of the world for any of these people. Everyone was amicably, you know, let go, but they were let go in the end of the day. WWE is a huge company and you look at Take-Two, the owners of the GTA IP or, you know, many other 2K. I'm not saying it's right at all, but they released, you know, 5% of their employers or something like that, which is like 500, 600 people. It's insane to me. Again, I'm not saying it's good. It's just the reality of uh, big businesses, big companies and WWE with, with them making 6 billion, 5 billion dollars deals they're also a big company and so releases like this regardless if the company is you know spearheaded by triple h Vince mcmahon nick it doesn't matter these are bound to happen and zion quinn you know we look at his career he's really not done anything i mean he does have a striking look as far as like oh well, he looks like a Samoan <laughs> with the tattoos and everything. I don't know if he's a Samoan. I mean, he looks like a tough guy. But other than that, I guess he never had the character. And again, I just never seen him do anything in NXT. And the last thing I've ever seen him do was job to Braun Breaker on the main roster on Raw. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, like he's been here grinding, you know, trying to do anything really for years and years now, like good amount of years, at least five, maybe. Just want to be accurate about it. He was, you know, he debuted in 2020. So there you go. And I did try to go to his Twitter page and see if he said anything about this, uh, you know, um, at all. But he says, the last thing he said in March 8 is, if you can't forgive, why should God forgive you? Uh, yeah, so we'll see if he even wants to continue professional wrestling or just focus on something else. But let's move on to the second person who was released. Now, I say the second person, but these two really come as a package deal. We're talking about Sanga and, well, this might be surprising to you. But at the same time, not really, but we are Mahan with his partner. They've been released. Now, you know, if this was the Vince McMahon era, I would have been a little surprised because of how high Vince McMahon was on uh, Veer Mahan specifically. I mean, we were waiting for him to come for so long, right? For thousands of we weeks, it felt like. But with Triple H being at the helm, I mean, there was, I guess, just no way of really repackaging these guys or putting him in a story that would make them interesting. Although, you know, Sangha definitely had some ruthless aggression, you know, in the ring. He wasn't too excitable. He didn't really have a crazy character, though he, d he does stand out in. I don't remember what it was, but there was some sort of controversy. And then Sangha tweeted about it and it was like super level headed, like one of the nicest tweets I've ever seen. So like he just stood out to me as a great, great person. And honestly, like none of the people here again are crazy. All of them you know, got separated from the company amicably just because of, well, creative has nothing for you. And it doesn't seem like any spark is coming from either direction, either from us, the WWE, or from you as the performer yourself. So we're just going to end things uh, right here. But yeah, this tag team, they were tag teams by themselves. They, they were like the in a stable with, well, you know three people stapled I don't know if you could call this stable regardless they tried stuff with Jinder Mahal it just for some reason it never worked out maybe they weren't good enough wrestlers maybe there were some backstage problems who the hell knows there might have even some health issues you know as this was the case with uh, Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper you know rest in peace to both of them so you never know next up is Zia Lee the first ever I guess, yeah, should be. The first ever Chinese, female Chinese wrestler under the umbrella of the WWE. It is surprising because from what I know, there is no other really like big Chinese wrestler. From what I know, like I said, I don't know if wrestling is big in China. I've never seen <laughs> such a thing. Uh, Japan, maybe, you know, a wrestler from China went to Japan. They're close by enough. Uh, maybe, you know, she made a name 
for herself there. Not sure, but all I'm saying is that she's one of a kind in that aspect. And you know how far they went with freaking Jinder Mahal, which we're going to talk about him as well, of course. I'm sure all of you know by this point. But yeah, that should have really secured Zali's position, I thought, in the WWE. But that's not the case with this guy right here, Tyler Duran, saying Tony Khan right now. I mean, yeah, I could definitely see Xia Li resting a bit more and, you know, cashing that check for a... Hopefully, though, she doesn't see it as like, oh, it's an opportunity for me to make a bit more money to, you know, squeeze out as much as from resting as I can, which is, you know, that's completely her right. And it makes complete sense if she wants to do that. But I would hope that she uses AEW as a opportunity to get better, maybe get back to the WWE. But yeah, it's surprising. This is another person, just like with, you know, Sangha, Weir Mahan. They tried a lot with her in NXT. She was, she had, you know, many times where they tried to put her in the roster as a badass and position her for a championship title reign, right? But I just don't think she had enough or what it took in the ring. Um, and she, from what I know, can't cut a promo either. I've never seen her cut a promo in like a, you know, prominent moment. So those two things, when you don't have them in wrestling, it's obviously going to be tough. But she was also in her own stable with Bo or something. And she had a mask. It was a strange gimmick. I remember, yeah, just very recently, she was like, injuring or concussing people with a kick or something like that on the main roster again something just didn't click many many times they tried with her and i think the reason why they tried many times is because well not only is she is she chinese but she's hard working and she has a certain look right um but it just never worked out so i um, know uh, some of you guys really like her and i definitely think that she had potential uh but i don't think it was anybody's fault necessarily that things didn't work out both parties tried, it didn't work out, so we just move on. Now, this has to be the funniest way of announcing you, you know, getting released. Jinder Mahal basically said in his suite, it was like, oh, I'm a free agent, I quit the WWE, I'm out of here. Which is crazy to me, we'll talk about the reason why it's crazy to me uh, in a second. But just to let you know, he has in fact been released from the WWE. He did not quit. If he, I don't think so. <laughs> like he did not quit. Not, like he, he's gaslighting or whatever. He's too good at it. I had no idea before the beginning of this year, Jinder Mahal had such good Twitter game, man. Jesus. But yeah, he's a free agent and he has a no compete clause for 90 days. I can see Maharaja, Mr. Maharaja going to a, I can see him, you know, uh, reuniting with his old partner. If he's still actively wrestling. God, I can't remember his name there. The orange hair dude from the three man band. The man who has kids, man. He's Slater. There we go. But I actually didn't know that this table for three existed. A table for three MB. I mean, that's kind of cool. That's kind of funny. I like that. Look at that. Independent spirit. This was one of the best things in, uh, I think, WWE Network. It would always, like, show up on social media as well. Because it just had, you know, good ideas like this. I also like Heath Slater a lot. And I like Jinder Mahal, too. Because in the beginning of this year, Jinder Mahal was at the top of the world, man. He was feuding with The Rock. He was feuding with Seth Rollins. Well... When I say feud, it was like just a one week thing for both of them. But he was prominent, man. His tweet got a lot of likes, you know, talking about Hook, saying who the F is Hook. He might potentially now wrestle Hook and Hook might go over him if Tony Khan knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? Bring, give Jinder Mahal a bit of money and put Hook over him. So nobody can ask the question again, who is Hook? And if they do, Hook can just say, hey, I'm the guy who just beat Jinder Mahal. So if you want to ask that question, you better be careful. There you go. But yeah, he, Jinder was right here in the beginning of the year. And then they put him right here, right now. Um, but I mean, he's done a lot in the WWE. He's old enough now where hopefully, like he did some other stuff with his life that he can just, you know, do wrestling if he wants to do it. He, he can do that too. Yeah, he can go to like wherever he goes. He's a big enough name he was a former wwe champion you know that's nothing to scoff at so he might even return to the wwe one day the reason i think it was let go at this point it could be two people are saying that it was because he injured Seth Rollins. it could be you know one of the reasons but i can't say it's like the premier reason i just, I just don't see it and like i remember him injuring finn balor too i think he need him or elbowed him back in the day and uh, like he was always a bit of a problem when it's when it comes to you know in ring stuff not only was he you know a potential cause of injury uh, i say that very like let's say carefully though because obviously like he didn't injure people 99 percent of the time he went into the ring but you know he just he was just involved with a couple of injuries that's what i'll say but other than that you know his matches were nothing to write home about 
But he was given an opportunity back in the day, I think 2017, by Vince McMahon and to, you know, get into the India market. And I think he took it. He took it, although it's, you know, useless because uh, I think all of India loves Roman Reigns way more than they do Jinder Mahal, especially because Jinder was like born in Canada anyways. It's still awesome that he's an Indian, you know, but like I would imagine if there was like a Turkish wrestler who was not born in Turkey, I would still like him and support the hell out of him. But it wouldn't be the same as a Turkish person who was born and raised in Turkey, you know, that comes from the actual land. Like that would even be two times more hype. I don't know. All I'll say is I enjoy Jinder Mahal for what he was. I think he like he, he had opportunities. He took the opportunities and he made the best of them. And he played his part perfectly and he knocked it out of the park, in my opinion, with everything that he was given. And before I go, here's this tweet. I When I liked it, it had like 11k likes. Now it's at 18k. Again, his Twitter game is strong, man. Look at this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, quite crazy. Will we see more releases? Like I said, if we do, I'll let you know. And the last thing I'll comment on is the fact that nobody got quote unquote future endeavored. I guess that terminology is going away now. And... They're also bringing the world of the word wrestling back. Like we can say wrestlers, wrestling, kind of crazy. I say this because I noticed them writing it on the tag team titles, the new ones, which that situation in and of itself is quite interesting. So if you want to watch a video about that, click right here. You'll see, you're, you're, I think you're seeing the video right there. Yeah. Anyways, I'll see you on the next one.